everybody out there in YouTube land. This is Will the Dragon Whisper, back with another video for the channel. I got my buddy Apollo here with me, and this is going to be the first of a three-part reptile room tour. I haven't done one on the channel in a while. The collection has changed a lot, and I'm going to be showing you guys all the bearded dragons that I still have now, as well as my other large lizards. Um, a lot of the collection has changed, grown, and, and, and gotten smaller over the last year. A lot of it because of COVID, because of new jobs, because of housing requirements for some of the animals as they, as they got larger. And some of the animals I've actually sent away to breeders that have more expertise than I do. And I'll be getting offspring back in the future. So the collection changed a lot. So I wanted to do a new reptile room tour. And like I said, in this video, first part, we're gonna be showing you guys the dragons and the large lizards. So um, me and Apollo, we're gonna get straight to it. But I wanna remind you guys to keep the attitude that all things are small to a giant. Have that attitude every day when you wake up. Be invincible, be a T-Rex, and try to affect the changes that you wanna happen in your life every day so we're going to jump right into this bearded dragon and large lizard part of the reptile room tour being apollo we're going to hit the road oh, we going, we don't need road. now this beautiful little dragon is ninja and unfortunately ninja has pretty severe metabolic bone disease um she was a rescue from a early OG subscriber, Ricky T. Big shout out to Ricky. And uh, he was one of my first subscribers to the channel and he reached out to me early in this dragon's life. He noticed it was having some issues and wasn't sure what was wrong. And we still haven't figured out if she had the wrong light or was getting the wrong supplement. But uh, Ricky asked me to take her in and she unfortunately at that point uh, already had the metabolic bone disease really bad. She had um, some a necrosis in her tail um, because of lack of blood flow so she had to have her tail amputated and uh, the vet actually thought she would never really gain any function of her back legs but um, as you can see right here she has no problem she can move those back legs and pull them out of my hands um, she gets herself around pretty good in her tank but because she doesn't have the tail and she has limited movement with her back legs she cannot ride herself so I can't put any climbing implements or really any enrichment items in here because she climbs up on them and then flips over on her back and then she has trouble breathing and she can't flip herself back over so unfortunately Ninja's tank does have to stay pretty bare and I do keep it uh, her in a fairly small tank so she can get to the cool side easily and without a whole lot of effort and I do have to put her food her salad right on the ground because uh, she can't really climb up and get into any kind of bowl or eat out of a bowl but i've tried my best actually um big shout out to nancy pendergrass um she is a, a good dear friend and she made this beautiful backdrop for uh ninja it has some pictures there on the wall of a uh, bearded dragon and a cat and um it says ninja's room a little clock and she tried to make a little backdrop to kind of bring some some life to ninja's enclosure and i do really appreciate that but that is my beautiful little girl ninja and i did not name her ricky t and his wife named her ninja and i let the name stick but i love this little girl with all my heart and she's doing really good now these are two of my hatchling uh baby bearded dragons that i produced here at tar hill exotics and the mother of these dragons uh was clara bell who unfortunately passed away um, due to a very unfortunate accident. I have shared that in a previous video, how that accident occurred. Um, and so these are my miracle babies. She laid one clutch before her unfortunate demise and the clutch only get, gave me three viable eggs, or actually five viable eggs. Um, one was stillborn, one passed away about a week after hatching and three uh, survived. Three were beautiful, healthy babies that had no issues and survived. Um, so this one here on the top, it has kind of a feisty attitude. Um, not really defensive, but just a little skittish and uh, got a little little spice to her. So I've named her Rogue. I have sex to her and she's a female. So that is Rogue there on the top. And then this one in the front here, I've named Bella. Um, she is very much like her mother. She's very calm and docile and such a sweetheart. She just yawned there. But these two females have lived together since birth. They get along great. I do feed them separately so that there's no issues. But uh, this tank used to be decorated for geckos. And they actually love climbing on the back wall there. 
um, and hunting for bugs and crickets there on the back wall. So uh, that is Rogue. Um, she's got beautiful, beautiful colors, a lot of red to her. Um, and then we have Bella up here uh, that has just the identical personality to her mother, Clarabelle. Um, but they're in this enclosure here. Um, look, oh, I thought he was going to go down there and get some get some veggies out of their little salad. But that is Rogue, and that's actually a little open mouth basket you guys can see right there. She's in her hot spot. Oh, and uh, Bell, Rogue did go down there, and she's going to actually get into the vegetables right on camera. That is so cool. Good little girl. Good little girl, Rogue. And uh, once again, that's Bella up there, open mouth basking. That is two of my three Miracle Dragons. Okay, you guys, this is the third of the three Miracle Dragons that I, I produced from Clarabelle and Ramsey's. And this guy I put into a four by two by two enclosure already with a little place sand substrate. It's very, very light. You can already kind of see the floor. It's a very small amount of substrate in there, but he's already big enough that I think he can handle it. Um, I put his food in a bowl or tong feed him, so he's not really eating any invertebrates or any feeders off the substrate. So I'm not really worried about impaction right now. And I, I've done this before, guys, so I, I know what I'm doing. So anybody wants to beat me up about the loose substrate in the comments, go ahead. Uh, I, but I know what I'm doing. But this, I've named this guy D'Artagnan. Uh, when the three of them hatched out, I really wanted to name him after the three musketeers. But uh, this ended, be, ended, ended up being the only male. And uh, for those of you who don't know the story well, there was actually four musketeers. There was Porthos, Aramis, um, Porthos, Athos, Aramis, and D'Artagnan. Uh, actually was the fourth musketeer, and uh, I've always liked that name. So this guy, he has quite the attitude. And I have, there he goes. There he is. He has quite the attitude for a little dragon. I'm going to be doing some videos on working with taming this guy down. Um, but he's beautiful, beautiful red colors, like really red. And with, that's kind of crazy because neither his mom or dad had a lot of red. But this is D'Artagnan. And uh, like I said, he's in this big 4 by 2 by 2 And people are also going to say, oh, my gosh, I can't believe you have that little dragon in such a big enclosure. If this guy was born in the wild, he would have all of Australia as his enclosure. So I've never subscribed to that. As long as you're able to monitor the animal and they don't get lost in, in the enclosure where you can't see them and you're not able to monitor their health i don't think a small animal is in a large enclosure uh is any issue if you if the more space you give them the more space they're going to use so uh, but this is d'artagnan another one of my beautiful baby miracle dragons now this is my big stud male breeder the father of the three miracle dragons this is ramses and his enclosure has a fold down drop down screen door and uh, I leave this door open all the time. Uh, Ramses comes out and roams around the room pretty much whenever he wants. And him and Ellie Mae, my puppy, are good friends. Uh, they never mess with each other. So uh, occasionally he bothers Jax. When Jax sees Ramses walking around the room, it can get him a little amped up. But, uh, but they can't see each other the way their enclosures are when they're inside their enclosures. Um, but sometimes Ramses will get Jax amped up. Uh, Jax thinks he's some kind of snack or, or a predator or maybe a, a equal adversary. I'm not sure, but there's Jax, my Savannah monitor over there, perched up on his nice little cave I built him. But uh, this is Ramses. He is a beautiful citrus blue bar. And uh, try to brighten up the picture a little bit for you guys. And uh, he's a big stud. He gets the attitude every now and then if i don't handle him a lot but i take this guy everywhere with me and uh, like i said he is the father of the three miracle babies and i think he has german giant in him because he weighs in at over 700 grams he is a big stud beast dragon and uh, he has a big four by two by two and uh yeah, he does have the coil UVB lights, but I do have two of them in there for him. I try to get him as much UVB as possible, but this is Ramses, my big male stud citrus blue boy. And this beautiful little guy is Apollo. And Apollo is going on three and a half years old now, and Apollo was my very first bearded dragon um he is what really made me fall in love with the species um he actually was a pet smart bearded dragon um and i think that's why he is a little small i mean he's three and a half years old he's a full-grown male 
Um, he's exhibiting all that he's ready to breed, but he's about half of Ramsey size and he's been that size for a good year and a half. So he has definitely stopped growing and he's kind of a, a small guy when it comes to male bearded dragons. Um, but he's got all the personality, but he has never Ramsey's went through a hormonal phase at the two, two and a half year mark. And he got very uh, defensive and aggressive. But Apollo has never, ever been that way toward me. But like I said, I raised him as a hatchling. I actually think PetSmart had him for sale when he was a little bit too young to even be offered up for sale. He had probably been out of the egg about two weeks when I got him. He was tiny, weighed about three grams. Uh, and I raised him from a hatchling. He used to fall asleep in my hand at night, uh, and which I'm glad nothing ever happened. Um, that's a big no-no. Do not fall asleep with your reptiles on your chest or beside you or in your hands. You can definitely crush them in your sleep. Um, but luckily that never happened, and I learned um, very quickly that that was not a good thing to do. But this guy, is he's, he's a stud, and he has the greatest personality. He's so docile. And uh, he never minds being held. He goes a lot of places with me as well. He also has a drop down door, but he has to kind of climb on it and jump down to the floor. But he does do that. Um, I'll open his door and let him come out when he wants. Um, but he also has a four by two by two um, with the strip UVB and a basking bulb. And uh, that's my boy Apollo. Now, even though he's not a bearded dragon, um, because the rest of my animals in my collection now are really geckos and ball pythons um i do have a couple other lizards that are not geckos and ball pythons and not bearded dragons but i'm deciding to include these in the bearded dragon video because they fit a lot better than with the part of the reptile room tour that will be including the crested geckos and leopard geckos and then the third part of the reptile room tour that will be all the ball pythons um, but as you can see here, I know a lot of people just throw rodents in and throw feeders into their savannah monitor. So they have this super high feeder response. Um, you guys can see right here, Jack knows that I'm not food. Um, he licks me and he knows I'm not food. I don't have to worry about this guy biting me. I can reach in here and rub him and pet him. There are very few other guys that have savannah monitors that can reach in there and pet their savannah monitor because they just throw rodents in there so they attack anything that moves and uh, they risk getting their hand bitten. But Jax knows that I'm not food and he knows how to act when I come in there to pet him. I can pick him up. I can put him in his bath and give him a soak. Um, he's a good boy, but that's taking a lot of work um to show Jax that i'm not food and uh, a lot of trust between the two of us um, but this is his big four by two by two enclosure he has dual folding down double doors and this huge concrete uh foam hide that i built for him that i show you guys in a previous video but this is Jax, my big pretty male savannah monitor now since i am including my big lizards in with the bearded dragons I did want to show you guys Bubba. This is my male Argentine black, Argentine black and white tegu. Uh, he is in brumation right now. I just uncovered him so you guys can see him. But uh, he's definitely a little grumpy right now. Doesn't like that I woke him up. But he came from Jesse's Jungle. He is a high white over uh, a sky panther line um, tegu. He is beautiful. Has beautiful whites on him. And like I said, he's just going into brumation. Um, so uh, he's looking to burrow back down and go back to sleep. I'm going to be changing this out to cypress mulch, but this was all the bedding I had on hand when he decided to go down. Um, but that is Bubba, my Argentine black and white tegu. Okay, you guys, once again, this is Will the Dragon Whisperer. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Smash that like button. Ring that notification bell. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Hit me up on my Instagram if you have any care questions or enclosure questions or any questions about reptiles. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Me and Apollo, we're out.